It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So today we're going to be having a look at the Must Tool G1200 digital microscope. Now this video is possible thanks to Banggood who has provided me the microscope to review and check out. However, as always, everything that I say is 100% my opinion. It is not scripted. There is no uh, directed comments or content in this video at all. So whether it's good or bad, uh, you know, I will lay it out for everyone. So the context here was that, uh, you know, typically in uh, the way that I communicate, they ask me if there's anything that I'm interested in and uh, normally it's around keyboards or keyboard accessories and I've done a whole bunch of tools before in the past you know soldering tools and things like that helping hands and I reached out to the community and said what kind of stuff do you want me to ask them for to review that might actually be of interest and people recommended what about a digital microscope not only just for soldering but also comparative viewing of keyboard parts okay uh, so we'll get to that in a bit so hopefully this will be able to shine some light on if it's a worthwhile investment for people to get one of these kind of devices so we'll have a look at the listing as usual and then we'll get down to the desktop and check it out so here it is so uh, there's the Mustu G1200 digital microscope it currently is 73 US but it claims to be normally 106 US uh, and it already has obviously reviews from others that you can see but uh, what it's stating is a 1024 by 600 little 7 inch LCD okay um, and it requires power it does have a 1080 full HD mode as well as a 720p video mode. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. You can see it goes up to 12 megapixels if you want to be taking pictures uh, and it should have some automatic ISO as well up to 400 ISO. Now it does support micro SD but I don't actually have a micro SD card to test that so I do want to mention that right at the start and supposedly it should have some kind of power interface. Now they did actually provide me with a power plug, so I'm hoping there's actually a, a power supply in there, otherwise uh, I won't be able to really check it out. Uh, it does say that there is a DC interface micro USB, so does that mean I can power it through a USB socket? We'll find out. Uh, so yeah, that, there's some pictures, some kind of uses, should have a tilting head on it, uh, so you can look at stuff pretty much. Now whether you can actually connect it to your PC to stream it, <clears throat> or if it's only going to take images then you'd have to transfer it off the SD card, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but we will try and narrow some of that info down. And you can see it's got you know quite a reasonable number of ratings, whether of course you can trust them to be real ratings or not who knows who knows okay so that is what it looks like listing wise so let's get on to the desktop so here it is um, now I haven't taken it out of any packaging simply because it came in the same packaging as the Daru EK861 60% keyboard that I reviewed earlier Okay, uh, and you would have seen me pulling that out of the same packet there, but it is actually still taped and sealed, so I haven't played with it at all. In terms of the box, uh, you know, it's fairly straightforward. It doesn't tell you a model number on the front, but it is the 1200X. Uh, lists a whole bunch of languages on one side. It says the stand should be tiltable. Uh, over here, it says video high expansion, HD color stuff is clunking around inside uh, and then supper battery working for three to four hours battery is optional do we have a battery do we not have a battery i do not know so <laughs> let's check it out all right i do hope this works uh it, it would be 
unfortunate if it didn't. Okay, so we've got a, a plastic shell with very little packing. Here, there's a, a quite thick, okay, so it does say the, uh, the G1200 there. Fairly straightforward, very large font <laughs> print. Okay, so there's a little screen protector there, and that is that is the the whole head unit right there. Um, so let's okay lift that out, and there is our heavy duty base. There is a power supply. Awesome. So that's the the stand. There's a USB cable and the base. So let's just put that aside for now until we put the base together. Hopefully that's not going to get knocked over and ruin anything. Do they not give you a tool? Do they give you a tool? I mean, a wrench, sure, but that's uh, that's cool. All right, so that that metal plastic, it's metal, just very lightweight aluminium. So that racks you up and down. But um, okay, so that'll screw in poorly. So obviously you want it to go that way and <laughs> and then you can use that to lock that in and oh okay so you definitely need a um some kind of spanner to undo that which does not seem to be provided um, um. Um, 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 um. I actually do not have any tools handy because they have been taken to the house for my renovations that I'm doing at the house. Uh, so that is a little bit of a uh, unexpected hiccup. I'm just thinking, do I have something in my bag. We will be right back. Okay, uh, I've found a Leatherman <laughs> and we will uh, hopefully not damage anything with the Leatherman, but uh, yeah. So just be aware if you're going to get one of these and you do not actually have a spanner or a wrench that is going to suit that, you may uh, end up doing what I'm doing, which is not really probably the best way of going about it. Wow, they really made this tight. But tight is, there we go. <laughs> okay, so it does loosen, but, 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 that is uh, actually a really terrible solution because there's no handle for this. How, like, once you set it in position, you're going to have to use a wrench or a spanner to lock it in again. I mean, right now I've got it, and it's okay, it's not really going anywhere, uh, but you probably want to set it to a certain tightness and look, you know, I've already left teeth marks from the Leatherman on it. So that's, hey, if you're if you're watching this, by the way, must tool, um, think about putting an, an, a handle on that, a knob or something that is actually going to allow users to control that and adjust that easily because 
that is that is actually a, a lack of foresight on that. Now, I could be completely blown out of the water here by taking this screen bit out and there might be one hanging around underneath it or a tool. So if that is the case, then I will apologize, of course, straight away. But the box says no. There is, there is nothing left in the box. So what we've got here is there's the LEDs and there's the actual video camera sensor. Uh, it's quite light. It's, it's really, really light. And we've got a power button. Uh, wow, the light on the ring light. So there's a power button, like a menu button, a display button, up, down, and an OK. They feel really flimsy. Uh, and there's a knob there. We've got a micro USB port on the side. We've got the uh, micro SD and a slot there. And there's the reset button and a brightness control for the LEDs here. So this is supposed to drop in. And then there's these two little uh, knobs here that will tighten it up so that it doesn't fall out of the ring. So here we go. So we just tighten that in gently. Don't want to over tighten it, just finger tight. And you know, that's, that's more than plenty to go in. So question is, what kind of voltage does this supply? And if I can drive it from the computer or not? I'm getting stumped by this packaging, there we go. Okay, so the power supply is 5 volts, 2 amps. Wow, okay. Uh, but the cable that they provide is not very, very long. So, what I'm going to do first is... Now this allows you to drive it up and down. This, this rack, and then if I believe this... Woo! Uh, controls how smooth or not lock it in place yeah it's just a tension there so uh, I have already micro USBs in my pile of connectors here so I just need to go and find one and then we'll be in business there we go there's one right there and we'll see if it can be powered from my PC without actually using the power supply. Okay, so... The light is on. So let's turn that on. Will it turn on? I held it down, and there we go. Whoa. Wow, that light is really bright. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna turn that down. So what you probably can't see very well, yeah, it's not, okay, so it says mass storage, PC camera, and record mode. So let's go with, uh, Do I, is it a touch screen? No, it's up down, isn't it? It's up down. Okay. Right, so it wants a card, which obviously I can't do anything about. Um, maybe let's go back. No? All right, so let's turn it off. Doesn't want to turn off. Uh, okay, so let's take the I probably should read the manual but you know oh here we go okay so it's actually it's actually trying to work now which is which is good now the problem is because I'm trying to show you what's happening on the screen uh, it's obviously trying to compensate and overbalance so I need to put a bit of weight on that so it's not going to tip over uh, what I will do is I will put 
my DS on that. Okay, so right now it's trying to focus on the the case there, but what I'll do is I'll turn up the light and I will go and grab a switch and wait for that. Okay, so that is okay so this is the focus so that knob in the middle is the focus and that focus is actually it's not bad it's actually like I can see it on the screen but obviously the video of the screen makes it look worse but um, if I tilt it up so I can actually see what I'm doing and I'm holding that steady that is actually really crisp I can see the dust sitting on top of that keycap very very clearly very clean it's very very sharp and I can turn the brightness all the way up and it's got an auto balance on that so that's actually working really really well quite lovely so the whole thing that I was talking about before on what you could do with this is you could look at components, right? So one thing that we all love to do uh, from time to time, especially when you're comparing new switches and things like that, is look at stems, right? People love to compare stems of non-switches to new switches. So what you could do is you could have a rig and look at that, right? Set it up so that all of your stems are in the same position and then you can take good quality pictures or video showing all the features. Look at that detail that this is actually showing of this brown switch leg. You can see all the little tiny bits of dust that's sticking to it as well as to the end of my fingertip and my horrible fingernails that people always complain about is too long and all of that kind of stuff. So you know what? This quality the sensor quality I'm actually really happy with it really does actually show uh, a great amount of detail and the light is more than plenty for kind of what you're actually looking at there and that 1080 full HD uh, seems to be sort of living up to what it's claiming to do at least on <laughs> this seven inch screen now whether I can get it off because I don't have an actual uh, SD card is is a different matter, but that's something you know to probably investigate later on. But the second thing about this is for soldering, right? And people, you know, if they have a hard time and they're looking at say uh, surface mount items and they want to have a bit of ease to see what they're doing, uh, there is actually enough working space on this this platform that you can actually solder with, right? So. You know, here's just one of my PCBs, and you know, if you wanted to whoa, put that underneath there, like this is super bright right now, but you know, I can obviously adjust that so it's not so crazy bright, um, since it's reflecting not only the light source from this, but also the light source from my my table, and you know, we can adjust the focus there, and we can look at the quality of the solder pads. We can look at what we're doing with a really fine tip as well. You know, when you're actually soldering, like, look how look how giant my fingernail is <laughs> uh, on that pad. So yeah, I think this would actually definitely be helpful if you wanted to solder some really really tricky components uh, and you want some really big blow up without squinting and you know casting a shadow over it with your light source and the iron getting in the way and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think this is actually, this is quite possibly a really good uh, tool so long as we can actually project it maybe to a computer or you know if you want to be able to save it to a device. Okay, so it says D is the mode key. So if I press the D Right, so we got 1.3. Uh, I don't know what mode that just went to. 
full HD. Okay, so this is this is picture mode. Um, camera mode, camera mode, playback mode. Okay, up, down, okay. Um, no, M is function setting. In video mode, okay, so I, I can press D to change to, that's the playback mode. Obviously it's black because there's nothing there. And then this is video mode. Now, how do I get it to potentially change to the PC? Uh, all right, well, let's just turn it off for two seconds. Okay. We're on. And... Hmm. It did not... Actually, it doesn't have the cable in, so it won't detect PC mode. So let's go to off. Because I pulled it out. So it was actually running off the battery on it. Silly me. Okay. There we go. Red light is on. It has power. Now if I turn it on. Two seconds. Yeah, there we go. So PC camera. Okay. So my USB sound on the computer just turned on. Um, I'm going to mess around and I do apologize if I kill this video because I might be able to add a video capture device. Create new. Make the source video okay. And <gasps> There you go. Um, USB camera. Okay. So, you... Yeah, this is sitting on top. This this bit that is uh, hanging around now in the middle of the screen is actually the camera running live. How cool is that? So, let's just uh, take this cream switch and pop it here. Right? And... There you go. You can now check out that cream switch. Although the white balance is is gone crazy because uh, I think there's all sorts of fun and games going on. Let me actually see if I can uh, adjust the properties. Configure video, camera control. Uh, Okay, so there is, there is auto exposure. All right. Now it doesn't doesn't really want to play very nicely with the usual OBS controls, but let me. Okay, so I'm not quite sure how to deal with that, but it could be you know PC related. Because look, see, I've just turned the light all the way down and the, the lighting compensation is actually being software driven. See, I'm making it really bright and then it's driving it <laughs> dark again. Uh, but look at that. We can see a good amount of detail on this cream switch. So I think this camera tool is actually really, really solid. If I flip that over, okay, and you can see the bottom of the stem. It's get that back into focus. See the end of that pin? Nice and crisp and sharp. Wow. So this actually has, to be honest, exceeded my expectations. I was not expecting this camera to be so easy to use. Uh, and look at all that, look at all that dust hanging around on the bottom of that O-ring on my keycap here, on this DSA keycap that I've got. Uh, <laughs> oh, 
focus the other way. Look at that. Now that is some very super fine dust and it's showing it really, really crisp. So the quality of this, and let me just turn that off temporarily, but like that's the dust we're talking about, right? That's hanging around there at the bottom. And I'm holding this keycap all the way up. Like it's only maybe a centimeter away from my overhead camera. Uh, so, you know, it's doing a re this, this tool down here is actually doing a really great job. And of course now I've gone and killed the, uh, the focus, the autofocus on my <laughs> tabletop. Okay. There we go. So, Look, I'm going to I'm going to leave that there because for what I would want to use it for hooking up to the PC is far better, right? I can drive that through my like OBS. I just need to play around with the exposure and, you know, the auto light compensation and everything else there and it would do the trick. Once uh, you know, I have that down pat, then this would be a fantastic tool for recording, streaming, building, reviewing, uh, if you ever wanted to get really down with detail. And because it's got a fixed size plate, you could build a jig that could sit on top of it that would hold stuff in the same position every time so that, you know, it's at the same relative scale. You've got this slider on the, on the side that is quite fine control in terms of how much movement that you can move it to. So you can set marks so you know that it's always going to be at that same focal length and magnification. There's a lot of things you can do with this that will give you a lot of visual, uh, you know, flexibility, I suppose is the good way of describing it for what you want to see and present. So you know what, most of all, I think this is actually a really great product. The only downside that I'm still not happy with is the fact that this bottom, uh, part of the stand this nut here does not have it doesn't come with a tool and it doesn't have a handle right provide one and this thing would be an absolute knockout in the park um, I think for the value the amount of money that you pay for one of these it's actually quite reasonable all things considering how well it's going to work long term the longevity of it I obviously don't know a bit too early to tell uh, the buttons do feel a little bit cheap, but you know what? You can deal with that. You obviously have to make some sacrifices along the way for what you're going to get. But overall, uh, very, very solid, very, very solid product. Well, that was a pleasant surprise. And I didn't even have to use this power supply. It just goes straight into the PC and it works five volts. No problems whatsoever. Well, that's it. Um, I think if you are interested in getting one of these, uh, I'll have a link in the video description below. I don't know if I'll get a coupon code that I can share with you that might give you a discount, but always, you know, you can leave a comment and check in with me if you'd like me to find out if there is one, if there wasn't one at the time that the video was provided. Uh, and if you like this kind of stuff, checking out tools and different things related to and around that mechanical keyboard space. And of course, hit that like button, share this with people who might be looking for tools like this that will help them out with whatever that they're doing. And yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. So thank you very much for coming along and checking out this video. And of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.